Daniel Foote, the special envoy to Haiti, has resigned in protest of the mass deportations and inhumane treatment of Haitian migrants at the US border. The expulsion flights to Haiti, by the way, began on Sunday and there were about 10 by the end of Tuesday, according to Haitian officials. US officials also say they are ramping up to seven flights a day, which would mark one of the swiftest large scale expulsions from the US in decades. But despite the mass deportations and the cruel treatment of these asylum seekers at the border, Republicans argue that the Biden administration somehow isn't harsh enough. While of course, progressives are furious at how insanely violent and harsh the Biden administration has been toward migrants at the border. Very similar to what we experienced during the Trump administration and the fact that some of these centrist Democratic voters aren't really calling Biden out on that. It's just fascinating, really, really interesting stuff. Now in his resignation letter, Foote wrote, quote, I will not be associated with the United States inhumane counterproductive decision to deport thousands of Haitian refugees and illegal immigrants to Haiti, a country where American officials are confined to secure compounds because of the danger posed by armed gangs to daily life. Our policy approach to Haiti remains deeply flawed and my policy recommendations have been ignored and dismissed when not edited to project a narrative different from my own. And by the the way, he mentions the inhumane treatment of Haitians and the mass deportations. I agree with him on that. But I have a bad feeling about some of his recommendations or what he's urged the Biden administration to do, especially in regard to meddling in the governmental affairs of Haiti, right? So I don't know exactly what his intentions are, but I'll get to why I'm a little suspicious in just a second. Now, US Ambassador Michelle Sisson is also expected or yeah, Sisson is expected to depart soon after being nominated to serve in another State Department post. And she adds another critical voice to the administration's response to Haitians camped on the Texas border. So before I get to my suspicions, Jenk, do you wanna jump in? Yeah, I'm curious about those suspicions. Yeah. Um, uh, look, overall, uh, our policy towards Haiti is miserable. Um, so we've got the border police pretty much whipping them uh, at the, you know, at the border. Um, uh, so, and then we barely helped them uh, with the natural disasters, etc. All the things, I'm really curious about your uh, theory, Anna, because mm -hmm. all the things that this diplomat is saying seems to be true to me. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of CYA now, cover your ass at the Biden administration. No, no, it's not us, it's him. Um, if you say so, but your policies suck, uh, so that's a fact. And uh, and if you think you're um, winning over Republicans with your by being brutal to Haitians, uh, turn on Tucker Carlson and see how that's working out for you. Every Republican is claiming that you guys are letting him in the country on purpose. Uh, even as you're shipping them out and flying them out. There's a Republican congressman that went on the air today, just flat out talked about the replacement theory. Uh, because they're now white supremacists without any brakes in the car at all. And, and he said, oh, Biden's flying them around the country. He's using taxpayer money to fly them around the country. He's getting Gitmo no. ready to detain them in Gitmo. I'm not even kidding, that's part of the story as well. I mean. By the way, I mean, we've been using Gitmo to detain undocumented immigrants seeking asylum. We've been doing that at least since the 1990s during the George H.W. Bush administration. That was when we were using Gitmo the most. It's not the same detention center that you know Muslims are being kept in. In some cases, Muslims that we know haven't even done anything wrong, but we continue to keep them detained indefinitely anyway, which is insane. But I do want to give you those details, okay? so. The service, the DHS, Department of Homeland Security, is currently looking to give a contract to a private company to operate the detention center at Gitmo. The service provider shall be responsible to maintain on site the necessary equipment to erect temporary housing facilities for populations that exceed 120 and up to 400 migrants in a surge event, the contract solicitation says. And just to give you a little bit of history on this, as I you know, implied earlier, during the George H.W. Bush administration from 1991 to 1993, when many Haitians sought to flee the country to seek asylum in Florida, as many as 12,000 were sent to Guantanamo Bay under a policy overseen by then Attorney General William Barr. 
and I'm sure he yeah. uh, had great pleasure in doing it. And I found this old report from back in 1991 to show you what the conditions were like um, as these uh, Haitian refugees were you know, seeking asylum and waiting to see what their fate would be. And it gives you a sense of how cruel it was back in 1991. I'm guessing it's not gonna be so great in modern days. Let's watch. Curious eyes peer from behind the concertina wire as we pull up to Camp Macala, one of the makeshift tent cities housing Haitians in Guantanamo. The kids don't seem to mind, but there's something troubling about children playing next to razor wire. Something frightening about a barefoot toddler wobbling past the metal stakes that hold up a tent. A big complaint here is lack of information, not knowing what's going on back in their homeland. This man listens for news on the small radio the army gave him. And the only problem is it picks up only the Cuban stations and he doesn't speak Spanish. But they do have this, a big screen TV set up in a nearby hangar. Nine to five, it's turned on to CNN and about a dozen Haitians at a time are allowed to sit in. It's not much, but it's a luxury the Cuban refugees don't have. It may be the only luxury the Haitians have. What do you want? You want my shoes? Yes. At least two want right? boys want my shoes. Another one wants my watch. Looking around, it's obvious they have little to wear. And at dinner time, little to eat. Man, it's just, it's heartbreaking what this country does to people, man. As, the, as we, as our government destabilizes their country, as we do it on behalf of business interests, uh, then we turn our backs on them and treat them like animals. Uh, now uh, looking to use Gitmo again uh, to, to hold these people. Do you guys know why Haiti was poor in the first place? Um, it's because they led one of the earliest slave rebellions. And when they did, the Western nations that were wealthier punished them. Yep. And so they cut off trade with them and they did a great number of other things to make sure that they starved the, the former slaves in Haiti. Because how dare you rise up against the white man? And this is what we did, we brutalized that country for so long now. And now the Republicans say it's not brutal enough. Lindsey Graham's on television defending the whipping. He said that guy on the horse, the border agent that seemed to be whipping the Haitians with the reins of his horse. He says, that guy's here to protect you. Who's you? And of course, what he means is white people. I mean, Racist white, right, white people, they're here to protect you from black people. How are they dangerous? They're, they're desperate, they don't have any money. They're, they went, you know, a lot of them actually came from Brazil and South America because they had relocated back in 2010. That is an unbelievable trek because they dared to believe and have hope in America. And the racist Republicans come here and, and shred them. And then Biden says, oh, no, 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 I could be really brutal to them too. I'll take the planes, they're not flying them across the country, they're flying back to Haiti. Okay, he said, I don't even wanna hear it. We're gonna ignore international law, we're gonna follow Trump policy, and we're not gonna even go through the process of finding out if they really have a legitimate claim of being a refugee that, that has a chance of staying here and getting asylum. Nope, you're not getting a hearing, we're ignoring American law, international law, we're going with Trump law. And, and now he's hiring people who might speak Haitian Creole for Gitmo. They're good, they're, they put that job posting and then when they got caught red handed, they're like, oh no, it could be for anything. No, it can't, really? Haitian Creole? I mean, they literally says that in the job description. So you're planning to put Haitians in Guantanamo Bay to appease Republicans. How's that working out for you? It's just stunning how dumb Democrats can be. Um, all right, so let's get to uh, foot and why I have some, I have a bad feeling, <laughs> okay? Again, I, Take this for what it's worth, take it with a grain of salt. But apparently he's been very critical of the Biden administration for weeks and weeks and weeks. So even before this mass deportation effort of you know the Haitians. So for weeks, the Associated Press wrote, Foote had been quietly pushing in Washington a plan to boost US security assistance to Haiti to pave the way for new presidential elections. But Haiti watchers said he became increasingly disappointed with the pace of decision making in the administration. And he's also getting some praise from, uh, from Republicans, including one Republican strategist who now works as a lobbyist on behalf of the Haitian government. No, and I just wanna be clear though, yeah. that's the only Republican I've heard giving him praise and he literally gets paid by the Haitian government. I know, but this is irrelevant, no, mm -hmm. this is relevant. Because mm -hmm. here's what I'm concerned about. like. 
the United States has a history of propping up these puppet governments. And that has not worked out well for places like Haiti. So it seems like part of this guy's frustration is that the Biden administration isn't working like quickly enough to prop up some new like Haitian puppet leader, you know? That's that's the way it's coming across to me. I, I hear you. Yeah. I, I'm definitely not sold on that. I mm -hmm. don't know. It's hard to know Foote's motivations, but him bringing attention to this important matter and the fact that the Biden administration is being generally terrible to Haitians is a good thing to me. So, but you know what? We'll ask him to come on the show. Yeah, I would love that. I would love that because yeah. unfortunately, no one at the Associated Press elaborated on this. No one at the Associated Press asked him questions to, to you know, maybe fill in some blanks. Like this is relevant. What does he mean by that? I want to know what he means by that. Yes. Right? Provide security for presidential elections in Haiti. Okay, but what does that mean? Does that mean we send in troops to Haiti? Like who are we propping up? Like what's going on? That's the important relevant part to this. Great that he's uh you know condemning Biden's inhumane treatment toward Haitians. I totally agree with him on that. But I want some more details on this. Anyway, but to go back to that uh Republican lobbyist who now works on behalf of the uh, Haitian government, he said this, when someone who is tasked with Haiti policy at the highest level resigns because recommendations are ignored and dismissed. It's not only troubling, but shows you this administration does not tolerate anyone who won't go along with their distorted view of the facts. Dan Foote is a world class diplomat who refuses to be told what to do. I wish more foreign service officers had his courage to stand up and call out their bosses. So that seems like a totally benign comment, but you know, it's coming from a Republican who now works as a lobbyist for the Haitian government. What, what like what's going on? I want to like know what the underlying issue here really is. I got you. Uh, my message is the same. Biden, Republicans don't like you. Will never like you. Will never give you any votes. It's not the 1990s. Grow up. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. So really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.